Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and I work in a lot of mediums and you're going to see two of them today. A few weeks ago, I posted a video that was called 14 Tips for Better Drawing of Plants. And in that video, I asked if you guys were interested in a class with that drawing in it in order to learn step-by-step -step how to do all of it. And I do have that class available now. In that class, I wanted to put something extra. I put a half hour long alcohol marker version of the same drawing in the class. That one is sped up because it was three hours of drawing in alcohol markers. So it's not a marker class. Please don't expect that. But I thought it would be helpful for you to see after you finish the entire drawing, how do you then take what you learned in the graphite drawing and apply it when you start making a drawing in color in whatever medium you choose. It doesn't apply just to alcohol markers. There's some kind of general philosophy on art and how to approach a drawing that are in that video as well. So let's get started with this comparison side by side so you can kind of see the differences between graphite and alcohol markers. So I hope this is not visually too confusing for you because it was visually editorially difficult for me to try to get the footage to line up for the graphite on the left and the Olo marker on the right. And I used Olo markers kind of as a challenge to myself because Olo notoriously does not have currently a lot of greens in their collection. And it was my one complaint about Olo. I really like their markers, but I wanted to see as a personal challenge if I could mix enough colors to make an entire drawing like this. It was by halfway through uh, evident to me that this was not the best way to go. I probably should have just done this in Copic markers where I have a wider selection of colors. I still would have had some mixing to do, but at least I tried this, right? And I learned something from it. Here I was using the complementary color of green, which is red, to make some deeper greens since I didn't have that. But boy, did I struggle throughout all of it, trying to layer yellows over top of blues and, and blue greens and blues and blue greens on top of yellows and yellow greens to try to make a variety of greens because it just was really impossible to use just, I don't know, six or eight colors, which was all I had in the, you know, traditionally green category. I don't remember exactly how many it is, but it's very limited. I did eventually give in and get out a pen because a pen could give me at least the detail that I wanted because I was trying to do something apples to apples with the graphite drawing. I don't know if I succeeded. You can judge at the end if you think one is better than the other, but it did allow me to get into a lot more of the detail. And with markers, they have a fat nib to them. So it's usually not as easy to get the super fine detail. There are things that I've done in alcohol markers where it looks very detailed, but it's really actually quite loose if you look at it up close. But here I was trying for a little more apples to apples with it. Now, when you're working in multiple mediums, a lot of people are like always asking me, well, like, how can you just pick up a medium? And you know what to do with it? Because I work in a ton of different mediums and I can do that because I have the basic drawing skills under my belt. And I know there's a ton of people that say, I don't know how to draw. Well, you don't know how to draw until you practice drawing. <laughs> it does take a while to do, which is why I always say we got to eat our vegetables. We got to do the basics of drawing and learn how to draw in graphite because when I had already completed this drawing in graphite, in black and white, I knew the values really well. I knew exactly where I wanted my darks and my lights. And when it came time to doing a section like this, where I was doing some negative drawing around grasses, which in graphite you can do by erasing, you have to do negative drawing when you're working in markers because you can't just erase things. And I already knew though, how to handle some of those 
contrasts in value, all I had to do was think about the technique in the marker and the colors that I was using, which again, the colors were just the bane of my existence while I was trying this drawing. However, the values were no problem for me. I knew exactly what I was going to do and I was ready for it by the time I got to each of the sections because of the experience in graphite. So even though the video in that's the bonus lesson of the marker one is in like super speed because it was three hours and I'm not about to put anybody through watching three hours of me uh, doing a marker drawing. It's a half an hour. And during that half an hour, I do talk a lot about, you know, the ways that I was mixing the colors, the things I was thinking and my general philosophy on art as well. And the way I approach a drawing like this. So a lot of that might be helpful, even if it's a rather crazy drawing that I don't know that anybody's really going to try in Olo or any other markers necessarily. My recommendation, if you want to do this drawing after you do it in graphite and you want to do it in color, I would recommend probably trying it in colored pencil because the techniques are fairly direct from graphite to colored pencil. You can use the same blending tools. You can use the same blending solutions and you do have to think about the colors and figure out what colors you're going to put in things, but they're a whole lot easier to, to mix when you're working in colored pencil, because especially when you're working in something like Olo markers, or if you have an incomplete collection in whatever brand you have, it can be a challenge to try to layer those colors and get them to look right. And of course, this one is not looking anything like the colors in the original photo, but I was trying for the values. That was what I was going for. And I think the values I got down pretty well. The two drawings are relatively comparable. So if you're interested in becoming better at whatever your medium is, I highly recommend learning to draw. The drawing class, the plant drawing class is a level three because there's some expectation that you've tried some drawing before. It's not for necessarily first time people just setting out. If you're somebody who's never drawn anything at all before, there's two classes that I can recommend uh, that'll, that'll kind of get you there and then you'll be ready for this one. And that would be probably the 30 days to more confidence sketching class because that just gets you every day for 30 days putting pencil to paper. And I give you something to draw and I show you my drawing, but a lot of it is very self-managed. It's, you know, you just sitting down with pencil and paper every day and doing some drawing, getting in that habit. And if you've taken that class, you can probably handle this one. But if you want more traditional art instruction on drawing, like I have a drawing 101 class that I consider what I would have wanted when I went to college for my very first drawing class. Because I got all of that information in bits and pieces, but I run it more like a drawing class in that we talk about, you know, cones and cylinders and shading on them and, you know, like those kind of traditional exercises, which some people do find boring, which is why I created the 30 Days to More Confident Sketching class, because at least we're drawing, you know, turtles and trees and otters and just all kinds of things, all sorts of different subjects, even like drawing your pantry is one of the early lessons in it. So I do all I can to try to make drawing and art accessible for as many people as possible and not make it boring. Now, I don't know if you'll agree or disagree with me about this drawing, but I think it hangs together even with the crazy colors because the values are still correct. And I got the values from doing the value study when I did the graphite drawing. So if nothing else, let this encourage you to do a pencil study before you proceed with a finished piece because it's going to teach you so much and make your piece much better. And if you're interested in any of the classes, it's all linked in the doobly-doo down below and it's on sale for the rest of March 2024. And I always have something on sale. So just check the sale page anytime you're looking for a deal. And I will see you all later. In the meantime, get out there and create something every day. And I'll see you next time.